Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you how to construct a curly table for a group. And this question concerns a group G 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. We are going to verify that this group actually satisfies all the group axioms and then answer a question about the subgroup of this group. First, construct a curly table, which is actually a multiplication table. I have left out a few blanks. I'm going to show you how to compute them. For example, the first blank here is 5 times 7 modulo 16. So what is 5 times 7 modulo 16? Let's call my calculator. I have 5 times 7 and then divide by 16. So it's 35 over 16. Then convert this into a mixed fraction. The remainder is 3. Therefore, I know that this number here is going to be 3. Then how about 5 times 11 mod 16? So I take 5 times 11 and then divide by 16. Then this is 55 over 16. Convert them into mixed fraction 3 and 7 out of 16. So the remainder is 7. So I write 7 here. And then one more slot here 7 times 9. 7 times 9, we know it's 63. You divide by 16. And you find out where is the remainder. In this case, 63 over 16 convert to mixed fraction. Is 3 and 15 out of 16. Therefore, the remainder after the right 16 is 15. And this, we have completed the Kelly table. You can verify the entries of all the other entries. Next, we're going to verify that this is a group here. Now, to verify that G is a group, there are four axioms. First one is closure. We no notice that no new elements are needed to complete the table. So, this group is closed. Second, the identity element is 1 because the first row and column repeat the element in order. Third, the inverse of each element. So let me write down the inverse of each element. First of all, 1 times 1 is 1, inverse of 1 is 1. Then let's find out where's inverse of 3. Now 3 times 11 is 1, so inverse of 3 is 11. And what is inverse of 5? 5 times 13 is 1, so inverse of 5 is 13. What is inverse of 7? 7 times 7 is 1, so inverse of 7 is 7. How about inverse of 9? 9 times 9 is 1, so inverse of 9 is 9. How about 11? 11 times 3 is 1, so inverse of 11 is 3. How about 13? 13 times 5 is 1. So, inverse of 13 is 5. And then 15 times 15 is 1. Inverse of 15 is 15. So, therefore, each element has an inverse. As for the fourth example, multiplication is always associative. So, we need not to prove. Finally, the last part. We are going to find a non-cyclic subgroup of order 4. We know that a non cyclic subgroup of order 4 must contain identity, three elements of order 2. And it cannot contain element of order 4 because once it contains element of order 4, it will become cyclic. Since we know that 7 squared is 1, 9 squared is 1, 15 squared is 1, so we take h equal to 1, 7, 9, 15. And this will be the non cyclic subgroup of order 4 required. It's the end of the recording.